Hello and welcome to the Digital Public Library of America, or DPLA, which is the subject for today's featured screencast. My name is Michael Rodriguez and I serve as South Florida's community rep for DPLA. Check us out at dp.la. The Digital Public Library of America is a tax-exempt nonprofit based in Boston, Massachusetts. It is also a free and open access online discovery tool. Rather than hosting physical or digitized items itself, DPLA contains metadata records for over 7 million photographs, manuscripts, books, sounds, moving images, and other items drawn from 1,300 libraries, archives, museums, and cultural heritage sites across the United States. Each record links to the original object on the content provider's website. Let us try a sample search for John Steinbeck, my favorite author. You can see that this basic search returned 49 results, which we can further refine by format, image versus text, by contributing institution or partner, by date of creation, by language, by location, and by subject area. We can also view any of these objects by clicking on the link, which takes us to the web page of the contributing institution, in this case, the Smithsonian Institution. From here, we can view, tag, download, print, or otherwise interact with the object. We can view the metadata, and we can even conduct a new search within that contributing institution's archives. In addition uh, to the basic search, beyond the basic search, DPLA also offers lots of cool interactive features such as the exhibitions, which uh, curate key resources on a particular American cultural or historical moment, such as the Gold Rush. You can see that this particular exhibit was created by a library science class at the University of Denver using Omeka, no less. Also unique is the map feature, which shows the number of searchable items in the DPLA according to the state from which they originate. And uh, the timeline feature, which gives you a year-by-year -year breakdown of when the items were first created. So, for example, if we are looking for items created in 1700, we drag the box over to that date. We select the year from the... Um, options here, and we can tell that there are 1153 items that were created in 1700 and that you can access via the DPLA by, again, clicking the View Object link. DPLA's mission is to draw on the nation's living heritage in order to educate, inform, and empower everyone. This is an ambitious mission statement, but you can see that DPLA already has won several awards as it works to make that goal a reality. DPLA is run by a dozen paid staff and was launched in 2011 by the Berkman Center for Internet and Society at Harvard University and is funded by grants from the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, National Endowment for the Humanities, and others. DPLA is hard at work establishing a national network of hubs, bringing together digitized and born digital content from across the country into a single access point for end users. Partnering institutions include Hathi Trust, ArcStore, Internet Archive, New York Public Library, and just recently, the University of Florida. So far, DPLA has incorporated mostly public domain content. The challenge will be to start incorporating copyrighted ebooks, journal articles, and other materials down the road. DPLA also serves as an open platform for developers. DPLA uses an application programming interface, or API, and open source data. This encourages independent developers to create cool new apps and discovery tools that enhance the DPLA user experience. My favorite app in DPLA's app library is the Serendipomatic. Essentially, you type in a keyword and Serendipomatic will return a series of random historical images associated with that keyword. I always forward this app to my history students during exam week to try to make their inevitable cro procrastination at least marginally productive. This concludes today's featured screencast. 
Once again, DPLA resides at dp.la, and you are always welcome to visit. Thank you for listening.